Proverbs 8 tonight. Proverbs 8 to start off with, and we're going to go back to Proverbs 2. For those who are reading through the book of Proverbs uh, uh, on a daily basis, some of you I know have jumped ahead a little bit. It's easy to do because it takes you about five minutes to read one of these chapters. And, uh, but we're going to read Proverbs 8. That's what you're supposed to be reading today. And if you haven't read it, then guess what? You're getting ready to read it. If you've already read it, then you already know what it says. And uh, you are ready. So uh, 30, was it 35, 36 verses uh, here in this chapter. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. If you go all the way back to chapter 1, he talks about it's, it's to teach the simple. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of His way, before His works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet He had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When He prepared the heavens, I was there. When He set a compass upon the face of the depth. When He established the clouds above. When He strengthened the fountains of the deep. When He gave to the sea His decree that the waters should not pass His commandment. When He appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by Him. As one brought up with Him, and I was daily His delight, rejoicing always before Him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of, the, of His earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. All right, back to chapter 2, if you would. Chapter number 2. And tonight we're going to be seeking God's wisdom. The Bible says, we're just going to read the first uh, four verses or so. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou, thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and imply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. And then there's a lot of things that will happen. Now, we're talking about seeking the Lord. We uh, uh, preached this morning from Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Here tonight we see the word in verse number 4, If thou seekest her, or if thou seekest wisdom as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Do you know tonight, what you seek, you find. 
Did you know that? What you seek, you find. The Bible has a lot to say about seeking. The Bible has a lot to say about seeking the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find Him, if thou seek Him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. 1 Chronicles 28, 9, David talking to his son Solomon, and he says this, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Uzziah, the Bible says this about him, King Uzziah. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he, Uzziah, King Uzziah, sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Psalm 27, 8, When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. This is just a, a handful of verses, and, and I'm not done yet. Isaiah 55, 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while, when, while he is near. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Verse 13, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Seeking the Lord, seeking Him with all of our heart. Again, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Luke 11, 9 and 10 says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Hebrews eleven six. 6. But without faith it is impossible to please God, the Bible says. But for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently Seek Him. Seek Him. And then we read here in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse number 1 through 4 about seeking for wisdom. Seeking for wisdom. And that's what the book of Proverbs deals with and that's what we're going to seek here tonight. Now, all right, uh, David, Evan and Joey. David, come up here on the front row. All right? I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm, we're going to do a little experiment here tonight. And if... And if uh, you think that this is a little crass or whatever, you can tell me later. Uh, uh, after church tonight, uh, see me afterwards, write me an email, write me a text, whatever. We're going to do something with you guys here, okay? Uh, we're we're going to have let y'all go on a treasure hunt. Would y'all like to do that? Would y'all like to do that? This afternoon, I placed something that looks like this underneath somewhere on these pews. Hold on. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Not yet. Oh, there's plenty of them. There's plenty of them. And I have some prizes up under the pulpit here. Uh, they have a number on them. And so whatever number you get goes along with the prize. But what, I, what, what we're doing this for, uh, first of all, of course, to keep these kids uh, uh, excited and said, you know, uh, it, is, it is cool coming to church sometime. But... Uh, it's, it's also to remind you of how much, if, if I told you, listen, if I told you there was a, a, a $1,000 in one of the songbooks out there, there would, uh, there, would, uh, there, would be, there would be a little bit of action out there. A uh, uh, thousand bucks. Now, there's not a thousand bucks out there. Okay, just don't. But but all I'm saying is, if if we if you knew that there was something out there, if you knew there was a, 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 something in your backyard, somebody told you in your backyard is is a treasure chest, you know, with a hundred thousand dollars in it. I guarantee you, before uh, you went to bed tonight, you'd dig a hole on, on every part of your backyard trying to find that. Okay. Now, yeah, or whatever, whatever would work. Sure. Now, so we're, we're, we're going to show you how intense it can be when you are trying to search for treasure. Trying to search for treasure. No adults can help them. All right, here's, here's a couple of rules there, first of all, all right? A couple of rules. Do not kill each other. Right. 
Uh, uh, matter of fact, Joey, you go on that side over there. Okay? You're going to look only on that side. Now, none of these are near where people are sitting, I do not believe. Okay? Uh, I do not believe. I think... Uh, yeah, all right. Do not jump over people. Do not jump over people or pews or anything like that. Once you find one, you have to bring it back, okay? Once you find one, that's all you got to do is find one. It's going to have a number on it. You bring it back up here to me, all right? All right, so you two guys are going to be searching on this side. You are going to be searching on that side, all right? It's right up under the pew. It's, it looks like this. It's just a little yellow post-it note with the words, you win, and a number on it, all right? That's all it is. So they're not around where people are, so go where people are not. On your mark, get set, go. All right, they're looking. It's underneath the pews. Underneath the pews. Underneath the pews. You got to look. You got to look. Once you find one, you have to bring it back. It's not near where people are sitting. All right. Just have a seat on the front pew right there. Have a seat on the front pew. All right. All right, we're still looking. You got to get under the pew, son. What number you got, Joey? Two. Number two. Let's see what number two is. Number two, right here. All right, there you go. What number did you get, Evan? Six. Number six. Let's see what number six is. Number six is a five, $5 McDonald's oh. gift card. All right, finally. All right, what number you got? Five. Number five, all right. You can go have, have a seat down there. Number five. Oh, you get the other box of candies. Isn't that neato? All right, so there you go. There you go. All right, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Yes, there's more. There's more. Y'all come see me afterwards, all right? And we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. All right, back to the message now. All right, so they were seeking. So you get the idea of seeking. I will tell you here tonight, everybody's seeking something. Did you know that? Everybody's seeking something. Do y'all know anybody who is living basically just to, for money? To get rich? That's, that's basically what they're seeking in life is, is money. People uh, seek fame. People, people seek pleasure. Uh, people seek uh, uh, sexual fulfillment. Uh, others seek uh, worldly power. You know, people are out here seeking a wife or seeking a husband or seeking a new career or uh, seeking education or new home or whatever it may be. There are three things that people are seeking after in our world today and they're, they're wasting their time doing it, I can tell you, to, to, for, for total satisfaction and fulfillment. Number one is money. Money, you know very well. You, you've heard me say it. You could say it yourself that money itself is not going to make you happy. Matter of fact, I know people that uh, uh, have plenty of money and they don't have their health. And you know what they say? They'd rather trade everything they got so they could feel good. Uh, money itself will not make you happy. Sex in and of itself will not make you happy. And, and we think sexual conquest and all that, that's not going to make you happy. Power, having power, authority going to make you happy. No, it's not. People want money, so we sacrifice our families to get it. People want sex, so we sacrifice our morals to get it. And people want power, so we sacrifice our friends to get it. And let me tell you something, when you finally get it, or when you think you got it, guess what? It does not satisfy. We're seeking. Everybody's seeking something. Uh, the Super Bowl, y'all know what the Super Bowl is, right? the football game at the end of the season. It was called the, it's called the ultimate game. And somebody said, well, if it's the ultimate game, why do they play another one next year? 
It's not really the ultimate game, is it? Because you have to get right back at it and somebody's after you the next year. And somebody's after to win it the next year. It seems like, you know, uh, uh, you climb to the top of the heap only to discover that next year you got to start all over again. Nothing in life satisfies forever. Do you, know, do you know really how to find out what you're seeking in life? What you're spending your time on and what you're spending your money on. What you spend your time on and what you spend your money on. Uh, 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 time is life and money is nothing but the time it takes to make the money. Show me your calendar, show me your checkbook, show me your credit card expenses, and I'll tell you what's important to you. How many of you ever watched Gilligan's Island? Some, of, some folks say, what in the world is Gilligan's Island? <laughs> well, that was a show when I was younger that you know, we used to watch all the time. It's, it's funny. Bob Denver, you know, you hate to see these folks get old, don't you? You keep wanting to think they're young like they were. Y'all ever heard of the professor on Gilligan's Island? Now, isn't it amazing that the professor could take banana peels and turn them into diesel fuel? He could take algae and make chocolate fudge out of it. But he never got around to fixing that hole in the boat. Now, I mean, I know it was a TV show, and I know that's the reason they did that. They couldn't ever get off the island. But here's the idea. People do amazing things in life. Think about it. People do amazing things in life. And then, that, and, and really, things that really didn't matter in the long run, and they ignored the hole in their boat. Because we're seeking the wrong things. We need to be seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And of course, incorporated with that is seeking wisdom. Seeking wisdom. Blessed are they, I mentioned to you this morning, uh, uh, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, 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 and, and, and that's one of the greatest promises in the Word of God. Because listen to me, I believe tonight that if you want wisdom, you can find wisdom. If you seek wisdom, you can find wisdom. If you want to walk close to God, you can walk close to God. I believe tonight that if you want a better marriage, you can have a better marriage. It's what we're seeking. If you've never watched the movie Fireproof, there's a scene uh, uh, part of the way through of, of, uh, uh, at the fire station, and, and uh, they're talking, and, and um, I forget their name in the movie, but uh, Ken, the, the black guy, is talking to Kirk Cameron, and, and he says, Listen, you will go into burning houses and save people from burning houses. And yet you're sitting back while your marriage is going up in flames. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's a pretty powerful uh, statement. He says, you, you will go out and help people you don't even know. Save people you don't even know. And yet, the wife that you're supposed to love, you're just letting that just go up in flames and just burn down to the ground, in essence. He said there's something wrong there. I believe if you want a good marriage, you can have a good marriage, a better marriage. If, if you want to, you can do God's will. If, if you want to, uh, you can read the Scriptures. You can pray. You can walk in the Spirit. You can be a man of God or woman of God. Uh, if you want to, you can change habits that, that are not good for you. And I'm talking about in the power of the Lord now. I think you got about as much happiness and joy in your life as you really want. Well, that's what Abraham Lincoln said one day. He said, I, I think that most people are about as happy as they want to be. And that's kind of it. That's the way we want to be. That's the way we want to be. You know, either we're happy that way or we've accepted that this is who we are and we're not going to change. I believe tonight we all seek something and we're all out there and, and intense seeking, seeking something. But let me tell you something. It matters what you're seeking. And if you really want the things of God, you can have the things of God. You can be what you want to be for God.
Now, you're, whatever you seek, you're going to find. And if you think what you're seeking is what you're really looking for, and then you get it one day and you say, oh, that didn't satisfy me. That's because you were seeking the wrong thing. You need to be seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You know, a lot of times uh, uh, people stay the same way they are because they're pretty much the way they want to be. And, and there's all sorts of excuses that people uh, bring out uh, when, when they're, they're told or when they're confronted with the idea that they need to change, they need to quit seeking the wrong things and start seeking the right things in their life. And then they come up with all these excuses. Well, one of them may be, uh, we have a pity party. We say, listen, if you just only knew how hard my wife was, if you only knew it, you wouldn't be on me like this. Listen, I, I know some people have, have a tough time. I know some people have, have been raised in very tough situations. But I'm going to tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ can change anything, can change your life in any way. Don't, make, don't have a pity party. Don't sit around in self-pity. He said, uh, people will say, well, if you just knew how bad my husband treated me, or if you just knew how bad my wife treated me, or if you just knew how bad my mom or dad treated me, or, or my kids treated me, or whatever. So I'm not going to live for God in the way I need to live for God. That's wrong. Having a pity party. Self-pity is the enemy of spiritual growth. People mope around and, 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 and walk around groaning and moaning and griping and complaining all the time. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to get any better if you're just going to have a pity party all the time. You're going to be stuck right where you are. Another thing that people use sometimes is, well, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Let me tell you something. You're either seeking for wisdom or you're not. Don't hand me this stuff while I'm trying. You're either seeking after God or you're not. One or the other. You know, you're either uh, uh, trying to, to uh, get into the Scriptures. Uh, and, 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 and by that I mean you're, you're, you're attempting to, to really learn what God has to say uh, to you. Or either you're not. You can say it like this. You're either uh, passing math or you're not. Don't come home and say, well, I'm trying. No, are you passing? You're either, uh, here, here's, here's one you may not like this one. I don't know. You're either losing weight or you're not. Well, I'm trying. You're either being faithful or you're not. I'm trying. I think it's just a weak excuse to take the pressure off yourself. Somebody's even said trying is lying. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. I believe tonight that if you want wisdom, you need to seek after wisdom. And you know what? God will give that to you. A lot of people's not seeking after it. And the third excuse, here, here's, here's the real good one. Well, I'll never change. Or even better than that, I can't change. Or I don't want to change. Now, let me, let, me, let me tell you this right now. If that's your bottom line, you said, I can't change, I don't want to change, you know, I, I'll never be able to change, then guess what? You are in trouble. You are in trouble. Because I believe the Word of God. I believe in progressive sanctification. I believe that God can grow us and change us to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ every day of our life. Amen. Well, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Where's that in the Bible? Somebody tell me the verse that is. Book and verse. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, it's not in there. It's not in there. I don't know what your mom and daddy is teaching you at home or whatever. <laughs> but it's not in there. <laughs> We're going to have to check out your Bible curriculum. Are you, uh, 
Are you really seeking the Lord and seeking wisdom? Or are you seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness? Or, you know, are we just kind of going through the motions here? Remember Isaiah 55, 6, Seek the Lord while He may be found. None of us knows what a day is going to bring forth. Don't say, well, tomorrow I'm going to change. You know, that, that's, the, that's the excuse, is it not? Well, tomorrow. 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 And you know, uh, uh, today we say, well, I'll do that tomorrow. And then tomorrow, what do you say? I'll do that tomorrow. And then the next day you say, well, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. And before long, psh, it's over. Tomorrow never comes. Here, here's some thoughts about this, and you'll see these on the board if you want to write these down, if you haven't already. You want to really change? You want to seek after God? You want to seek after wisdom? Here, here's what we got to do. Number one, you got to admit that you need to change. You cannot change until you admit that you need to change. If you're happy the way you are, then so be it. Go on with life. Uh, some of you are out there turning banana peels into diesel fuel, but you haven't fixed the hole in the boat. You're doing some amazing things that really don't matter when you ought to be doing something that really matters. So we can get off this island. Secondly, we need to cry out to God for help. I love what it says there in verse number 3. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lift us up thy voice for understanding. It, it's, it's like, uh, you know, we, we cry out, we, we lift up our voice. I said, Lord, I want to know you. It's, it's something that is passionate about us. It's something that comes from deep within. You know, instead of this, well, I, I think I want to know the Lord. Cry out, lift up our voice, cry out to God, seek Him with all your heart, and again, I believe you'll find Him. A third thing that you need to do is, is just hang out with the, the people that are seeking the Lord. Hang out with them. Uh, find people. And of course, that's, that's why you come to church, Hopefully. Uh, hopefully there's some people here that seek in the Lord. That's what we want to do together. And, and we come here to hang around those kind of people. Now, I, uh, I, don't, uh, I didn't go to bar this past week. I didn't go to bar the week before that. Now, a lot of people go to bars. You know why? Just to kind of hang out. Hang out with those folks. I like hanging out with people that want to seek God. And uh, that uh, will rub off on me. I, I, I enjoy being around folks that, uh, you know, really, really have a passion for the Lord. Really want to see uh, great things happen in their lives. Well, amen. Let's do that. And then we got to wait on the Lord. That's the fourth thing. You got to wait on the Lord. Now, I'll tell you, waiting on the Lord is tough, is it not? We want our patience, and we want it right now. What, what does waiting do? Well, it um, purifies our hearts and increases our longing to know the Lord more intimately. As we wait and we pray, we become like the deer, you know, panning for the water. Our souls grow hungry to know the Lord. Thomas, Thomas Kempis who wrote The Imitation of Christ, said, Seek God, not happiness. Seek God, not happiness. Now, can I tell you all this? Most America has that backwards. Seek happiness, not God. That's what, that's what most people do. You know, we, we want to have some happiness, and you know, maybe for some people, God gets thrown in, that's fine. If He don't, that's fine too. And then when you seek happiness and not seek God, guess what happens? You get neither. You get neither. The paradox of the gospel is that when we truly seek God, we find Him, and then you get that fulfillment. Then you get that satisfaction. Then you get that lasting joy. Then you get that abundant life. But too many people 
We're just pursuing happiness, pursuing happiness, seeking happiness, seeking all sorts of other things instead of seeking God. Seeking God. Seeking His wisdom. You know, when Jesus uh, would preach and teach to the people, and there was times where He would say, Come unto me, all you that labor. He would say, Come unto me. He never said, come unto me and, and give me money. He never said, come unto me and join the church. He never even said, come unto me and get baptized. never said any of those things. But he says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and, and what did he say? I will give you rest. In other words, I'll give you what you need. I, I will give you myself. If you're hungry... You know what we do? We come and eat of the bread of life. If we're thirsty, we come and drink of the water of life. If we're weary, we come and find rest. If we're guilty, we come and be forgiven. If we're far from God, we come back home again. Because that God-shaped vacuum is within all of us, and, and it's like that hole in the boat. You know, people are trying to do all sorts of things, but we need to fill it with God. Fill it with God. Seek God. I am really amazed, and, and, and you know this as well as I do. You know this as well as I do. There are plenty of people out in our world today, plenty of people, that know that they need to be changing their lives, and they keep on the same old, same old, same old, same old. They must like it. They don't want the Lord Jesus Christ to take control, so they keep control of their life, and guess where it's going? We just stay the way we are. We're trapped in the pit of a thousand excuses, and, and I guess people would rather have misery and pain than risk it all on Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but I, I think we take our salvation for granted many times, and you ought to be just overjoyed tonight that you're saved. You ought to be overjoyed tonight that you know the Lord. And I hope, and again, I know I'm preaching to the crowd that comes on Sunday night, you ought to be overjoyed that we can seek the Lord, and that's what we want to do here tonight. To seek His kingdoms first in our lives. Because you're never, listen to me, you'll never be happy until God's first in your life. Never. Never, never, never. Totally happy in your life without seeking Him and putting Him first in your life. So tonight... Again, you want wisdom? Seek it. You know what God says? I'll give it to you. All these things that we need, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you.